Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Wow. <laughs> uh, welcome to our worship service. It's September 1st. The sun is shining, and um, we are ready to worship God. So uh, we will begin our worship with the ringing of the church bell. So this morning we were supposed to be outdoors, and I was going to have a worship, and I'm still going to have a worship theme based on being outdoors. Uh, so we'll have slides throughout the uh, presentation or the service today that uh, have different outdoor scenes. I um, want to share some announcements with you. One announcement that's not in the bulletins to, uh, tomorrow, Monday. Uh, Mennonite Disaster Service will be over at the fire company uh, tearing out uh, damaged drywall and carpeting uh, because the fire company got flooded out during, uh, on Thursday. So if anybody has uh, time available and can, and can come over and help with that, uh, that'll be Monday. Um, see Jerry for more information. Um, we are continuing to collect uh, water and sports drinks for the fire, fire company due to a uh, scheduling conflict. We aren't able to have our joint worship service over there, but we still want to uh, show them our support and by collecting these items. So that'll be through the 15th. Um, there will be no Sunday school after worship this morning. The county fair worship service is this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Session meets Wednesday at 7, and then next Sunday, the session will meet together for prayer at 8.45 a.m. Next Sunday is also Dress Down Day, and uh, Stu Bear is collecting for the crop walk. Last month, he collected $327 for the crop walk. And we'll have food and fellowship after worship next Sunday. Next Sunday is also the beginning of a new uh, study for the Sunday school class, The Kingdom of God. Books are provided. Everyone is invited. Um, salad bar preparation is coming up the 19th at 1 p.m. There is a sign-up sheet in the ministry room if you can come and help with that. And that's both uh, setting up for uh, getting things ready for the salad bar and setting up tables and chairs. So we'll need some guys at that time too. Um, then Friday the 20th is our salad bar. There's sign-up sheet for that. You can sign up if you know what you're going to uh, donate for the salad bar. You can sign up for that. You can also sign up if you know you're going to be here to help. And then that Sunday will be our cookout at Ritzman Ridge. So if we have any salads left over, we can take those out to, the, to Ritzman Ridge. But we have our cookout at 4 o'clock. Um, coming up the 29th is our service of wholeness. Uh, for those in the McCoysville area, uh, on October 9th, Wednesday, we will have communion at Ragamuffin Hall at 6 p.m. And then the crop walk is coming up October 13th. If you would like to walk on Team Lost Creek, please let me know. Along with water and sports drinks for the fire company, this month, September, we are collecting toilet paper, paper towels, and trash bags for shelter services, uh, supporting Little Valley in, in one of their ministries. Are there any other announcements? Okay. I do want to say we're going to, uh, this, instead of a sermon, we're going to have some questions and, ans uh, questions and answer opportunities. Uh, for those of you in the uh, sanctuary, there's a bulletin insert that has questions for reflections. If you want to look at that and start thinking of um, uh, answers that you have. If you are worshiping with us online, I'll be showing the questions on the screen, but that doesn't give you a lot of time to reflect and answer. Um, I did put in the announcement for our worship service yesterday uh, all the questions. So if you want to go back to uh, yesterday's post, 
uh, where we announced our worship service. It has the big red X over the word outdoor. Um, down below in the comments are the questions for today. Um, and if you are worshiping at home and you want to answer one of the questions, just type your answers into the comments and we'll keep an eye on that. Anything else? Okay, let's prepare our hearts and minds. No. Uh, first, we are going to have our last psalm of, or reading from Psalm 119 by Ken Fowler. Good morning. Excerpts from Psalm 119, starting at verse 160. Glories of God's law. The sum of your words is truth and every one of your righteous ordinances endures forever. I rejoice at your word like one who finds great spoil. I hate and abhor falsehoods, but I love your law. Seven times a day, I praise you and your righteous ordinances. Great peace have come to those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. My lips will pour forth praise because you teach me your statutes. My tongue will sing of your promise for all your commandments are right. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let me, let me live that I may praise you and let, my, let your ordinances help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek out your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Thank you, Dad. Um, and now we will have our meditation music. You would join me in the uh, call to worship. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. We will declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the earth, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. We will ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Let us pray. Creator God, at the beginning of time, your voice brought light into the darkness. Your hands shaped dry land. Your creativity exploded in colors and shapes and smells. And your breath brought life to all creatures. As we worship, may we discover the light of your presence hear your purpose, giving voice of direction, and be amazed at and inspired by your creativity. And as we breathe, may you fill us with the breath of, of your spirit who brings true peace, 
rest, and strength. Amen. So at this time, uh, I'd like to ask Eva and Ella and um, Alex to come up, and they are going to share with us their experiences at Camp Chrisland, right? Yeah. <laughs> and um, we were, uh, the women in the session together were able to provide half scholarships for them to go to Chrisland this year, so we just invited them to come and share a little bit more. You guys can share whatever you want, and then I've got a couple of pictures. You can... Do you want to go first? Oh, no, I'm not... You want to go first? <laughs> okay. Um, hello. Um, you guys probably know who me and Ella are because we do this every year, but <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you guys for giving us a scholarship to go to camp again. It's always such a wonderful place to go to, and I'm always so happy to go there just to get closer with God and to meet other people my age who also have that same passion to learn more about God. Um, something that we learned this week was, what did we say? Entwined by love. Yeah. So our lesson was entwined by love this week. And we all learned that despite all of our differences, no matter what we look like, or no matter where we come from or our background, we are all entwined by God's love and we are all part of his community. Um, and I really learned that at Chrisland because in our group, um, that picture that was up there before, where it was like me and all my friends, um, we were all, um, <laughs> we all knew that we were very different from each other. Some of us didn't have the same interests. Some of us, you know, we came from different places, but we all did learn to appreciate the Lord at camp through um, prayers and worship in general. And it was just really great. It is my last year there as a camper, so I am going to miss that, but I do hopefully want to come back next summer and go into the LIT program so I can eventually be a counselor because I would just absolutely love to have that opportunity and hopefully that can happen but I'm just so grateful for all the times I've gone there so thank you guys so much and yeah. <laughs> that was pretty much it. <laughs> she really said everything. I had a lot of fun at camp. Um, we did get really close to God, and we made paper, um, <laughs> the paper circles, and we linked them all together and hung them on the cross to show how everybody is linked to God. And, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Thank you for sending us to camp. <laughs> lift you up here a little bit. Does that work? <laughs> you're, you're almost there. Okay. Did you, did, um, is there anything you'd like to say about camp? Um, at, at camp, it was at camp. It was really um, fun on the big swing because you got to go up, I think, sixty feet. And I went up to the top, and it, you went back and forth. And they had a pool, so you got to swim for an hour. And then they had a Messy Olympics, where you got to play in paint and wa uh, water. And at cr crafts, we also got to make friendship bracelets. And whenever we were on the last day, me and my friends all got each other's numbers so I could call them. <laughs> Very good. Anything else? Uh, thank, thank you for uh, bringing, bringing me to Camp Kisslin. Thank you very much. Let's say thank you to all thank of you. But just before they get off the stage, were there any questions? <laughs> They're running real quick. <laughs> okay. That's right, yeah. All right. And uh, this thing kept uh, jumping off this page here, but um, we, there's Alex. And uh, Ava and Ella. Uh, apparently, over there and with her back to us is uh, Ella, right? Okay. And uh, Eva's up in the co corner. Okay. So, so thank you very much. Um, let us uh, share God's peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. And just want to check out who's worshiping with us. Um, 
we want to welcome Tom, who's listening on the phone. Okay. Maybe? Maybe not. Okay, there we go. All right, so we want to welcome uh, Kathy Hutchinson and Reen Thomas and Jackie Fowler and Faye Pearson and Tessa Roger and Reese. Hi, Reese. And uh, Barbara Winter and Sandy Brown and Missy Waite uh, and Dale and Ann Goodling and Tim's with us, Mary Ann Gibbons and Yvonne Fowler. Hi, Mom. And Deborah Dressler and Penny Dunn. Um, so those are some of the names that I'm uh, able to see at this point. Uh, if I wasn't able to call your name, you are most certainly welcome. And if you are joining us at a uh, later uh, date, a date or time, uh, we still invite you to type your names into the, into the com comment section. Okay, let us join together in singing hymn number two, For the Beauty of the Earth. Please stand. Uh, oh, right, sorry. <laughs> One more time. And at this time, I'd like to invite um, our young people, Alex, uh, to come up, and anybody who wants to join her.
So how are you guys doing? Good. Thank you both uh, and you also for uh, sharing this this morning. And I'm glad the church had an opportunity to help you uh, go to Chrisland. Um, have you ever heard the little poem, Here's the Church, Here's the Steeple? Yes. You have. How does yours end? Um, you have opened the doors and surrounded me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, let's do the weird hand thing. Have you ever heard this one before? Okay, so put your hands against the right that and interlace your fingers and then bend them over. I'm starting to get too old for this. Okay, and then you uh, close your thumbs across, right? Okay, now, so you, you don't, want to, don't want to do that yet? Oh, yeah, not yet. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you go, here's the church, and now, here's the steeple, and then flip your hands over. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Open the doors, forgot, forgot that part. Open the doors and see all the people. Right, um, and then uh, close the doors. So you close your church up and close the doors, and hear them pray. Open the doors, and they all walk away. <laughs> you want to try that again? See if I can get it right. Let's do this again. Okay, ready? So here's the church, here's the steeple. Open the doors and see all the people. Close the doors and hear them pray. Open the doors and they all walk away. So uh, it's, a, it's a cute little um, poem that talks about how we come into the church to talk to God and to be with God. But then it talks about everybody going away. Do you think that that's where our interactions with God stop? The only place to be with God is in the church? No, no. God created this world, and God is everywhere. At camp, right? We experience God at camp. We can experience God in our home. We can experience God at school. A lot of people like to just go out into the wilderness, out, whether it's up in the hills or out in the, out in the country, uh, like to go out there and they feel God there. God is everywhere. And you can talk to God everywhere and know that God is with you no matter where you are. So even though this is fun, um, remember that when everybody goes away, you're not going away from God. God goes with you wherever you go. All right, let's bow our heads and close our eyes and we'll pray. You don't have to interlock your fingers, it's okay. And if you would, pray with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for your promise that you are everywhere and always with me. Help me always to trust in you. Amen. All right, thank you for our time together. So this morning, what I'd like to do is reflect on some scripture passages and uh, ask you to uh, help me reflect on those passages by asking, answering those questions. I actually printed up the uh, passages for you if you want to read along in, the, uh, in one of the bulletin inserts. Um, we were supposed to be outside, and a lot of people feel, say they feel really close to God outdoors. Some people will even tell you they can feel God present with them outside more than they can even in the church. And, and there's probably some reasons for that. One, the, uh, the wilderness, the outdoors can be very beautiful. Uh, sometimes you can be in one of those situations when, where you're on a uh, high hill or looking off at a, a majestic mountain and you, just feel, you can just feel the awesome power of God. And sometimes you're walking through nature and you uh, can hear birds sing and you can see animals skittering around and you're amazed at the diversity of the, the world around you. And these are all reasons why we might feel God present with us. But uh, what I'd like to do as we reflect on these passages today is look to see if there's another reason that we tend to feel God's presence out in the world and what it means for us, uh, how we are to respond to that. 
So the first passage I want to read is from Exodus chapter 26. This is one of the most loved passages in the Bible. I bet everybody here can quote it from memory. Okay, I, I'm being sarcastic. Uh, this, this passage, uh, Moses is up on the mountain uh, he, at uh, uh, Mount Sinai. Uh, God is giving him all the commandments. And this, starting with chapter 25 and 26 and several chapters beyond that, is the, all the instructions for how to build the tabernacle. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure everybody l runs to that and reads it at least once a week, right? Uh, we hardly ever pay attention to that. But I want us to look at uh, some verses talking about the construction of the tabernacle where the people would worship God. So God gave Moses instructions for the building of the tabernacle. The tabernacle itself would be made of curtains of fine twisted linen and blue, purple, and crimson yarns. And with cherubim, which are guardian angels around the throne of God, cherubim skillfully worked into them. It would be covered with a tent made of goat's hair, and the tent would, itself would be covered by tanned ram skins and an outer covering of fine leather. The frame of the tabernacle would be made of acacia wood, and it would be covered in gold, and it would stand in bases of silver. And then it continues, you shall make a curtain of blue, purple, and crimson yarns, and of fine twisted linen. It shall be made with cherubim skillfully worked into it. You shall hang it on the four pillars of acacia overlaid with gold, which have hooks of gold and rest on four bases of silver. You shall hang the curtain under the clasps, and bring the Ark of the Covenant in there, within the curtain. And the curtain shall separate for you the holy place from the most holy place. You shall put the cover on the Ark of the Covenant in the most holy place. You shall set the table outside the curtain and the lampstand on the south side of the tabernacle opposite the table. And you shall put the table on the north side. You shall make a screen for the entrance of the tent of blue, purple, and crimson yarns and fine twisted linen embroidered with needlework. You shall make for the screen five pillars of, of acacia and overlay them with gold. Their hooks shall be gold, and you shall cast five bases of bronze for them. So this is just a description of a long tent, a rectangular tent. A larger section is the holy place. The smaller section is the holy of holies where the Ark of the Covenant, God's uh, throne, is placed. It talks about all the beauty and all the craftswork and all the designs that are put into it. And it made me think about um, the sanctuary that we worship in. I know there's always this uh, argument, you know, the church is not the building, it's the people. But today I'd like us to think about the term church as the building that we worship in. So I have some questions here. And if you are worshiping with us at home, I invite you to um, type any answers you want into the comments. Um, but let me just ask you all, what is your favorite part of the church building? It could be the, a room. It can be part of the furniture. It can be decorations. And why? Yes. Okay, so thank you. So uh, stained glass windows, the intricacy and all the different parts um, remind us of the greatness of God and his craftsmanship. But also uh, these windows uh, went through a lot when we first moved here and went through the fire. And we go through a lot, but God is with us and helps us through. Okay, other uh, comments? The cross. The cross. said or something that's 
sticking his tongue just for all of you to look across to make me fully realize what Christ has done for us and to continue to do the magnificent. It's just magnificent. I just so the cross and uh, what it represents for what Christ did for us and what the church is all about. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the piano and uh, music in the church and the way that lifts our, our spirits and draws us into the presence of God. Thank you. Uh, Penny Dunn mentioned the church bells. Um, I, uh, I am glad that we've gotten back into the habit of ringing those bells every Sunday because it reminds people um, that God is with us in our community. Uh, others? I would say the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the sanctuary, uh, it welcomes us, and uh, we feel closer to God here, yeah? Anyone else? I like the windows in the altar in the special, each one of those windows, they make it their individual or individual in the past, mm -hmm. but they truly bring people to our body of faith and help them with their worship. That's right, so on the uh, outside windows, there are plaques that uh, indicate who the windows were donated in, in memory or honor of, and just reminds us of uh, some of the people who have been a part of this church and all that they've done for the church. My favorite part is the steeple. The steeple? Yeah, because when I can tell you from that direction, mm -hmm. that's, one of, that's my favorite thing to do in the world, is when you crash that West Hall and you see this, and what I see, that really stands out, are the people from the Lutheran and Presbyterian Church mm -hmm. carrying on tones. And that's what it draws me in. Okay, so the steeples, especially coming over the West Fall and seeing the valley, and right here in the middle of the town are the churches. Okay. And you know that uh, I grew up in Westminster, and at Westminster we didn't have a steeple. And the reason was because in 1954 there was a hurricane that came through here. And the steeple was knocked off the Westminster Church. And it killed one guy and then paralyzed another. Mm -hmm. So they agreed never to put the steeple back up. And then a few years ago, they said, because it's time that we need a steeple again. Right. So Westminster went without a steeple for a long time. Yeah. Uh, so another question is, are there any rules that we obey in the sanctuary and why? Okay, think back to when you were children. Uh -huh. I was going to say that. Like, we, we try to keep the children quiet, but in a way, I mean, that's, that's part of church. Or, like, I think it's cool when, you know, the kids would be, you know, like, they say stuff and, like, hear your sermons and stuff, and they'll just flirt. But I do miss those days, like, when the kids were here, because they, I tried my best back then to make them behave in a certain way, and I kind of wish that I might have just let them be themselves, you know, mm -hmm. like, to, like crawl along with you and doing that. Like when I grew up, it's like I grew up in the Episcopal Church and you had to be like come in and it's quiet and you sit in your pew and you kneel and you, it was like very like almost strict. Mm -hmm. When I became a Presbyterian, it was more freedom to just worship and listen and learn. And that to me, like, I don't know, I feel like when you, still when you come in, like quietness and letting other people connect with God is still important. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I do feel bad sometimes like if, like back when the kids were loud or whatever, but um, I think the quietness sometimes is when that's when people can connect to him, but it is fun sometimes to hear the little voices and just be thankful that children are, are here in our church. Mm -hmm. Right. So one thing that we try to uh, teach our children is that, you know, church is a, is a quiet place where we're 
um, worshiping God, and, and so you need to be quiet and, and let other people be able to worship God too, right? <laughs> um, what are some other rules that we, uh, especially children, but uh, even as adults? Uh, he's sitting in the same seat every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, sometimes we, we are so used to sitting in the same seat every Sunday, we get a little shocked when somebody else sits in our seat, right? <laughs> Okay, don't run in church, right? Yeah, what else? And I never knew that until we came here because of our, my son's church was more, much more relaxed. And so I thought when, when we came here, it was like, oh, well, everybody is quiet and stays in their booth. And, uh -huh. and, I, and I had never thought about that or heard that, but I did hear that uh, about children running in church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so coming from one church to another can be quite a shock if one church, like the Presbyterians, are frozen chosen and they're all sitting there quietly, you know, and don't run in the church and don't crawl on the pews, right? Maybe under, but not on. You don't walk all over the pews. Stand up in the pews. Like, she would just stand there and I would sit down. She was like, oh, it was hard to, you know, keep them. Yeah. So, so why, uh, what was the reasoning behind wanting to be quiet, uh, sitting in your pew, not walking all over the pews, not running in the church? What, what was the idea behind that? Reverence. You're in God's presence, behave yourself, right? But yes, uh, reverence. Um, you know, God is, we've come here to worship God, and we want to show reverence and respect for God. And a couple of generations ago, that would have also meant wearing, men wearing suits and ties and women wearing their dresses and their hats. You know, you dressed for church. You know, you had your church clothes. All of that. Things have changed, but there's still that desire to uh, teach our children especially, to respect and have reverence for God and God's house. Um, so who are the caretakers of the sanctuary? Okay, me. <laughs> no, all of us should be. All of us? You do most of it, but there are others that also come in, and we don't even realize that they come in and they do things because they don't, they just do it because they care about the church. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Uh, people care, care about the church, and some people, you know, clean, some people uh, fix things. We have our trustees, but really all of us have a responsibility for taking care of the church, and what happens to the church if we don't take care of it? It falls apart, yeah. Garbage would pile up. Okay, garbage would pile up, yeah. It might turn people away. Oh, yes. Rules about eating and drinking in the church. Should you or shouldn't you? We haven't started our coffee bar in the, in the, in the ministry room yet, but, you know, we might have to deal with that. Okay, so if we don't take care of it, then it falls apart, and that ability to, to feel like you're coming into the presence of God and worship God becomes more difficult, right? All right, so there's some things to think about. Right now, let us respond uh, to God calling us together in God's house by uh, affirming our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. For thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let's stand and sing the Gloria Patri together.
may be seated. So now we want to look at Genesis. I'm going to read a couple of verses from Genesis chapter 1, but we're sort of covering the entire chapter. Um, There's something interesting about uh, Genesis chapter 1. It gives us the six days of creation plus the seventh day when God rests. And it begins with uh, God uh, creating light and separating the light from darkness and making day and night. But when do the star, the sun and moon and stars, the things that actually give us light, when do they come into play? Do you remember what day that is? That's the fourth day. Doesn't it seem a little strange that uh, it would talk about God making light and day and night, but the things that actually give us day and night don't appear until the fourth day? That's because... Genesis chapter 1 was not designed to be a scientific textbook on how God created the world. It's a theological textbook on why. And I would like to suggest that what God created was a sanctuary or a church building. So let's take a look at Genesis. Um, I'm going to read verses 1 through 2 and 27 to 31. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was complete chaos, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. On the first day, God created light and made day and night. On the second day, God created the sky. On the third day, God pushed back the waters and the earth into seas and revealed dry land, and then plants grew on the dry land. On the fourth day, God created the sun, moon, and stars. On the fifth day, God created birds in the air and fish in the sea. And on the sixth day, God created animals on the dry land. And then God created humans in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and every beast of the earth and every bird of the air and everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food and it was so God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. And on the seventh day, God rested. So what I'd like to suggest is think about that passage from uh, Exodus 26, where God tells them, you're going to make curtains. You're going to make a frame to put those curtains on. You're going to make furniture, and you're going to put it in there. And this is going to be the place where you will come and meet with me. The, the tabernacle or the tent of meeting. That is what God is doing here in Genesis chapter 1. God starts by creating the framework of a sanctuary. The, there's the earth, there's night and day, there's, you know, pushes the waters apart, so there's waters up in the sky, the, you know, the clouds, and there's waters on the earth. Then he pushes the waters back so that there's uh, dry land with plants and there's water. It's kind of like that tent and that framework. And then God goes about putting things in the sanctuary. You know, sun, moon, and stars up in, in outer space and birds in the sky and, and uh, fish in the sea and pl- uh, animals running around on the earth. Those are kind of the decorations for the sanctuary that God has created. And it's interesting that after all of that is done, God creates humans in God's image. Back in Bible times, when a, a, a culture had worshiped their gods, they would create temples to their gods, and they would create an image of their god whether it was a a human-like image or an animal image, and they would put that image in the temple. 
So what God does here is God creates a temple, the entire universe. God decorates it with all forms of life. And then God takes humans, makes them in God's image, and places them in God's temple as a representation of God. But we also get that dual purpose where the representation of God in, in God's temple, but we're also the caretakers of that temple. And so I'd like to ask some questions about that. Uh, so what is your favorite part of God's earthly sanctuary? Well, it's growing up on a farm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you had quiet time. It was just you and God and acres and acres and acres of down hay and mm -hmm. fighting the weather. And, but it was uh, it's a good way of life and milking cows and you know, being it was just So life on the farm. Yeah. yeah. Especially all that uh, quiet time with God. Yeah. Other things that uh, you really love about God's sanctuary, the, the earth and the world, yeah. The ocean. The ocean. The ocean. Mm -hmm. So there's the immenseness and the power and the peace of the ocean. But yeah. you see those tiny little shells. Like, who created all that? And you can see all of that. Like, mm -hmm. it's just amazing. Right, yeah. Others? Just some beautiful looks. I'd rather go to the mountains and the forest than the <laughs> Okay, mountains and forests. Yeah. Sunrise and sunset. Sunrise and sunset, yeah. Rainbows. Rainbows. The full moon, okay. We'll get to that in a little in a little bit. <laughs> the four seasons, right? Flowers. Flowers. Yeah. yeah. I like the nighttime sky. The nighttime sky. Yeah. Whenever it's clear, mm -hmm. you have beautiful midnight bloom with all the stars and the moon and sometimes the faint blue between. Mm -hmm. It just makes you feel really close to God, and okay. it's so huge. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that God has created that help us think about God um, and feel God's presence. I'm kind of curious about this one. There's no right answer to it, but the question 1A, what does it say that God decorates the earthly sanctuary with living things? That's right. So uh, there's this uh, coming and going of the animals. There's daytime animals and nighttime animals, right? But um, so here in the sanctuary, we've put a lot of inanimate objects that decorate the sanctuary. But if the earth and the universe is the, is the frame of God's sanctuary, and then God peoples it with the, all these animals and even sun and moon and stars, what does it say to you that God used living beings to decorate his sanctuary? Okay, so he's the living God, right? Anything else? For me, I think it uh, just speaks to that idea that um, God is not just a part of the, the earth around us. God is outside of it. God created it all, and God is the source of life. All these little animals and bugs and uh, stars and moon and, and sun, you know, all of this is a reminder that God is the source of life to me. So uh, are there any rules that, we don't have to go too deep in this, but are there any rules that we have to obey or should obey in God's earthly sanctuary? 
No littering, okay. Yeah, if, you, if you're in, in a sanctuary, you don't want to leave trash lying all over the place or we pick up the trash. Same thing in God's earthly sanctuary. Respect everyone and everything. Okay, respect everyone and everything. Fortunately, there's no, no running in the sanctuary rules or else I'd have been in trouble yesterday. <laughs> Anything else? So something I want you to think about there, though, is uh, what are the, you know, think about the rules that we have for life in our church building. What are the rules for life in the church building of God, this, the, the whole world we're in? So who are the caretakers of our earthly sanctuary? Okay, the humans should be. Yeah, and uh, I wanted to share with you something that uh, Noreen Thomas wrote, kind of going along with what Brent said. Um, Paul Harvey once said, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker, so God made a farmer. And Noreen says, uh, I believe that statement. Farmers are the caretakers. They work the land, planting in the spring, tilling the soil, harvesting, and caring for the land. The animals are well cared for, doesn't matter if they are producing animals like cows or pigs or chickens or just the dogs, cats, and other animals that the children bring home. They are part of the farm. Gardens are planted in the spring and the harvest continues throughout the summer. Mom canning all the produce and fruits that are grown and, and purchased for, from the local orchards, all to provide for the family through the coming winter until it starts all over again in the spring. This is nature at its best the caretakers that God provided. I believe this because I live this life. Mom and Daddy raised seven children and a nephew on a dairy farm starting in Center County and finally settling in Juniata County. Even though I now live in Florida, my heart is still in Pennsylvania with my family. If I want to really relax, all I need to do is go back in my memory file and there's everyone, the farm, and all the animals from years ago. So... Um, thank you, Noreen, for sharing that. Um, but uh, the caretakers are all of us. God put us here both as an image of God in his sanctuary, but also as the ones who, care, who take care of this planet. And what happens if we don't obey the rules or care for the earthly sanctuary? We get destruction, yeah. Yeah, it's happening now. Yeah. So the last question is, does looking at the earth as God's sanctuary change the way you look at the earth? Um, if you have an answer, you're welcome to share it. You don't have to answer that now. But I'm, I'm just kind of curious. Um, yeah, you know, we talk about the world as a habitat, but would you treat it any differently if you thought of it as this is the sanctuary where we come into the presence of God and the rules that we would normally follow if we were in a building, how would we apply that to our day-to-day -day living out in the world? Does anybody feel a desire to respond to that question now? Okay, so some, but something I'd like you to, to, to think about. Um, let's join together in singing hymn 510, O Beautiful for Spacious Skies. Please stand.
You may be seated. So I want to close with a reading from Psalm 121. We'll get to read it again in a couple of weeks. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. And I wanted to share that because um, it starts with, I lift mine eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? And a lot of times, I think when we hear that phrase, we think of like majestic mountains and uh, the vastness of the, of the world, and we think of the greatness of God. But actually, what this psalm is talking about is the, the pagans that lived around Israel would build shrines to their gods up on the hills. And whenever Israel fell into idolatry, worshiping the gods of their neighbors, they would do the same thing. They would put shrines for their gods up on the hills. And what uh, the psalmist is saying here is, I'm looking up to the hills where all those shrines are. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. God isn't in any of these little shrines on the hills. God created all. This is his sanctuary that we are living in. Uh, Another uh, thing that I think about when I think about this is the full moon. Um, My grandma Fowler would always say people are wrong when they say that the full moon causes people to act loony or to act crazy. Because it says right here, I will not let the sun strike you by day nor the moon by night. There's actually a little bit more to that. In a lot of cultures, the sun and the moon, sometimes other planets and stars, are gods. And the psalmist here is saying, you know, those other cultures might be, might be thinking that they have gods up in the heavens that can, uh, can hurt me, but I know they can't. I know they were created by God. They, are, they belong to God. God will care for me. And so when we think about that God creating this world as God's sanctuary and wherever we go, we are in the presence of God and worshiping God, we can also live with the knowledge that God created it all, and so God is in charge of it all, and we can trust God to help us in our times of need. 
And uh, so I think we should move into our time of prayer. Um, as far as our Church of the Week, St. James Presbyterian Church and the Reverend Anthony Saturno are in our prayers this week. Let us pray for the leadership of the pastor in session as they continue to serve and celebrate the Lord. Uh, as far as our VIPs go, this week, uh, Caleb Schellenberger has a uh, birthday today. Wes and Abby are celebrating their 13th anniversary. It's hard to believe. Um, on September 3rd. And Adriana Neiman has a birthday on September 5th. Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries? We have Max on the 6th. Right, Max is on the, on the 6th. His first birthday is a dad, yeah. Any others? All right, let's uh, sing and sign happy birthday. God bless you. My mom made, made the comment, the messages today makes me think of God making a diorama, and he sees every part of his creation. So another thought about that. Um, are there any uh, general joys or concerns that we want to share right now? Yes. <laughs> That's right. Yes, um, a lot of people, I think, are inspired by our uh, signboard out front and who, who we're praying for. So, yes. So we are thankful that we didn't get that much damage here, but uh, we continue to pray for all those who are. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but uh, we do want to pray for all those who are still recovering from the flooding. <laughs> Mike says thank you for all the uh, calls and cards, except for maybe the card that was talking about replacement parts for older models. Okay, yeah. Anything else? So a sister who had surgery and is, seems to be recovering well, we give thanks for that. And daughters with COVID? Yeah, Lindsay and Kyle became. Lindsay. One got it, and then I think the other one got it from her. And uh -huh. so the first one's pretty, getting pretty good, but one of them is kind of, that's why it makes it kind of weird, even though they're walking the dog. Okay. And they help out, but, you know, call them the mask. <laughs> right, yes. That's right. Um, for the, thankful for those who have surgery, uh, we've already confirmed some of those who are still having complications from COVID, and also traveling mercies for the elderly. Okay. Um, those who have had surgeries for healing, those who are experiencing complications like Jen, uh, 
healing for her, um, traveling mercies. Anything else? The family of Theo Kaufman. That, right. Their friendship bookstore So uh, the uh, owner of uh, Friendship Bookstore, Teal Kaufman, passed away. So please keep him, his family in your prayers. God is always with us. In the life of our four days, right from the Constitution, it starts in the morning, the night. Okay. Sandy got her poured in for her chemo and starts on the ninth, so please keep her in your prayers. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Each of our petitions ends, Lord Jesus, send us your spirit. I invite you to respond, renew the face of the earth. God of beauty and justice, we pray for the earth, for restoration of soil, air, and water. Lord Jesus, send us your spirit, renew the face of the earth. We pray for all people you have created, for restoration of dignity and hope. Lord Jesus, send us your spirit, renew the face of the earth. We pray for our nation and community, for restoration of our of our sense of responsibility and service. Lord Jesus, send us your spirit. Renew the face of the earth. We pray for others and even ourselves and ask that you hear all our prayers lifted to you in this moment of silence. Restore our resolve to love you and the world you made. Lord Jesus, send us your spirit. Renew the face of the earth. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who also taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Um, what I'd like to do because of the time is uh, ask you all to pray in your hearts for God to bless our offering. We're going to sing the hymn, uh, In the Garden, and then we'll close with our benediction. Please stand.
invite you to remain standing. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit descend upon you all and be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.